Hello, welcome to the TechBits YouTube channel. Whether you are previous viewers or new viewers, you're both welcome likewise here. Today, we're going to be talking and discussing about a topic of Postgres roles, RBAC versus ABAC. A little bit of background. In a previous posting and video, we received some comments that there was some insights on wanting to learn more about which type of attribute access control or access control model is better. And of course, there's always two sides of the coin, RBAC or ABAC. RBAC stands for Role Based Access Control, while ABAC stands for Attribute Based Access Control, which are going to be the topic of today's discussion here. The whole idea is to determine which access control model is right for you. Well, let's go ahead and get started. RBAC, Role Based Access Control. It assigns roles to users. Permissions are tied to those roles. So those are the things to keep in mind. Let's look into the advantages. One of the advantages is that it simplifies administration by managing permissions at a role level. RBAC simplifies the administration of access control by grouping users into roles and assigning permissions to those roles. This approach reduces the complexity of managing individual user permissions, especially in environments with a large number of users or complex permission requirements. Administrators can easily grant or revoke permissions by simply adjusting the roles assigned to users rather than derailing dealing with these permissions themselves on a per user basis. This simplification streamlines the administration process and reduces the likelihood of errors or inconsistencies in permission management. Additionally, RBAC facilitates role based provisioning where new users can be assigned roles with predefined permissions, ensuring they have the necessary access rights from the outset. This accelerates user onboarding and simplifies the management of access control over time. Now, the other advantage is they provide a clear and understandable structure. RBAC provides a clear and intuitive structure for managing access control, making it easier for administrators to understand and maintain the system by organizing permissions into roles. RBAC establishes a hierarchical structure that reflects the organization's access control policy. This structured approach enhances transparency and accountability by clearly defining who has access to what resources based on their assigned roles. It from my stop promotes consistency in access control policies across the organization, reducing the risk of misunderstandings or unauthorized access. Moreover, RBAC enables administrators to easily audit and review access rights by examining role assignments and permissions. This transparency fosters compliance with regulatory requirements and internal security policies by providing a clear trail of access control decisions. Overall, the clear and understandable structure of RBAC contributes to better security posture and more efficient management of access control. Ultimately, enhancing the overall robustness of the PostgreSQL database environment. Stop ultimately enhancing the overall robustness of the PostgreSQL database environment. Now we move into disadvantages. Complexity in managing roles. As a number of roles and permissions increases, managing and maintaining them can become complex. This complexity can lead to difficulties in ensuring that roles are properly defined, assigned, and updated over time. Limited flexibility is the other disadvantage here. RBAC provides access control based on predefined roles, which may not always fit the specific needs of complex applications. This lack of flexibility can result in situations where users require permissions that do not neatly align with any existing roles, leading to workarounds or compromises in security. Let's move on into ABAC now. Attribute based Access control considers user attributes, resource attributes, and conditions for access decisions. Advantages offers flexibility with fine grained access control based on various attributes. ABAC allows for highly granular access control by considering multiple attributes when making access decisions. These attributes can include user attributes, for example, role, department, clearance level, resource attributes. For example, sensitivity, classification, environmental attributes such as time of day, location, 
and any other relevant context. By leveraging a wide range of attributes, ABAC enables administrators to tailor access control policies to match the specific requirements of their organization. This flexibility is particularly valuable in complex environments, where different users may require varying levels of access to resources based on diverse factors. ABAC supports dynamic policies that adapt to changing conditions, ensuring that access decisions remain relevant and effective in evolving scenarios. For example, access to sensitive data may be restricted to certain users during business hours, but made available to a broader group during off hours based on contextual attributes such as time of the day. Additionally, ABAC facilitates the implementation of role-based access control, RBAC, as a subset, allowing administrators to define roles as collections of attributes rather than predefined sets of permissions. This approach enhances the granularity of access control while retaining the organizational structure provided by RBAC. Now to how ABAC, the advantage, one another ABAC advantage is handles, how it handles its dynamic scenarios where access depends on multiple factors. So, unlike traditional access control models that rely on static role assignments, ABAC excels in handling dynamic scenarios where access requirements may vary on a combination of factors. These factors can include user attribute, resource attributes, and contextual information, such as the state of the system or the user's behavior. ABAC enables administrators to define policy that consider a wide range of dynamic factors when making access decisions. For example, access to sensitive data may be granted only if the user requesting access is within the organization's premises and using a trusted device, ensuring that access is granted only under specific conditions. By dynamically adapting access control decisions based on contextual factors, ABAC enhances security and flexibility in PostgreSQL environments. It allows their organizations stop to enforce access policies that align closely with their business requirements and risk tolerance, while also accommodating changing circumstances and evolving threats. Furthermore, ABAC facilitates the implementation of adaptive access control strategies, where access decisions are continuously reassessed based on real-time feedback and analytics. This proactive approach helps organizations mitigate security risks and respond effectively to emerging threats enhancing the overall resilience of the PostgreSQL database environment. Disadvantages. Complexity in policy management. ABAC policies can become complex to manage due to the potential combination of numerous attributes and conditions that must be considered when making access decisions. As the number of attributes and conditions increases, the complexity of defining, maintaining, and auditing these policies also escalates. Administrators must carefully design and document ABAC policies to ensure that they accurately reflect their organization's access control requirements while avoiding unintended consequences or conflicts. This process may require significant time and expertise, especially in large or dynamic environments. Moreover, the interdependency between attributes and conditions in ABAC policies can introduce challenges in understanding and troubleshooting access control issues. Administrators may struggle to identify the root cause of access denials or unexpected access grants, particularly when multiple attributes interact in complex ways. The other disadvantage is performance overhead. ABAC policies often involve evaluating multiple attributes and conditions to make access control decisions, which can impose a performance overhead on the PostgreSQL database system, especially in high transaction environments. The need to dynamically evaluate complex policies for each access request may result in increased processing time and resource utilization, potentially impacting the overall responsiveness and scalability of the database system. Additionally, the overhead of ABAC policy evaluation may vary depending on the complexity of the policies and the volume of access requests. Organizations must carefully consider the trade-offs between enhanced access control granularity and potential performance implications when implementing ABAC in PostgreSQL. Mitigating the performance overhead of ABAC may require optimizations, such as caching frequently accessed policy decisions, employing efficient indexing strategies, 
for attribute-based queries, or offloading policy evaluation to dedicated access control servers. However, implementing these optimizations adds complexity to the system and may introduce additional maintenance overhead. So those are the few implications that we have to keep in mind. The comparisons, as we can see here in this slide, we have granularity and we have flexibility. RBAC has less granular, but is also based on predefined roles. ABAC is more granular, but considers multiple attributes for access. When it comes to flexibility, RBAC is suitable for static environment with well-defined roles, while ABAC here is flexible and adapts to dynamic environments and changing access needs. Let's go ahead and take a look at the administration and scalability. RBAC simplifies administration through role-based grouping, while ABAC can be complex due to the policy definition on various attributes. Then we move to scalability. RBAC is more scalable in stable environments with fixed roles. And ABAC handles dynamic requirements, but requires careful policy management. A lot of content, yes, but most importantly, here we have a code example comparison for RBAC and for ABAC. Now let's take a look. This code is not extensive by any means, but the whole point of this two comparisons are to be able to see quickly and highlight the differences between RBAC and ABAC. We see the setup. We also see access checks and sample usages for both. This is for you to evaluate and determine which one is best for you. Last but not least is the conclusion. ABAC, lots of great advantages, but they all come with more complexity. RBAC is utilized and considered most of the time, particularly because of its simplicity and flexibility. So which one's best? Bottom line is evaluate and assess carefully. You must determine which access control model is right for you. That means that in certain scenarios, it might be worth considering a hybrid approach. Maybe a combination of both might lead you to a better success and much more granular control for these two models. In the end, you know your organization best and what its fully desired needs are. So there is no true determination of which one is best over the other. It's a combination of both. If you made it this far, thanks for staying. It's a long winded conversation, a lot of content, and definitely we want to give you as much detail as possible because it is a controversial topic. Feel free to share these videos with anybody who you think might be benefited from them. Like, subscribe, that helps us keep on providing these videos. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.